appears the renewed interest for genealogy stimulated not only to study archives but also to include them in interesting academic projects and public initiatives. From this perspective, the growing attention to public history and digital humanities in the field of the Jewish studies, given rise to hundreds of digital archive projects from all over the world, with the aim of preserving the social history um, and the, the Jewish communities. In Italy, there is a digital version of the Jewish historical archive of Livorno, Rome, and Mantua. Um, Existing projects on the web, however, only provide images of this document with brief description. The, the main limitation of all these in initiatives is that they not allow the immediate construction of stories, genealogical paths, and parental relations between different people. Moreover, the reading of this manuscript is often precluded to users without paleographical theological skills and knowledge. The Ascapi project, acronym of Archivio Storico della Comunità Ebraica di Pisa, that is Historical Archive of the Jewish Community of Pisa, born in 2020, have the aim of digitizing, transcribing, analyzing, and publishing on the web a number of documents of the archives of the Jewish Community of Pisa. The result is uh, a useful tool both for scholars who will be able to use it to reconstruct the history of a specific individual and for the private citizens, descendants, and young students who will want, who will want to learn more about an important testimony of Jewish history, that is also Italian history. The pilot project was funded by the Institute of Informatics and Telematics uh, of the National Research Council with the collaboration of the Jewish community of Pisa and the researchers of the Interdepartmental Center of Jewish Studies, Michele Luzzati, situated at the University of Pisa. Before going into the core of the project, I would like to say a few preliminary words about the history of the Jewish community of Pisa and its archives. The Jewish presence in Pisa can without hesitation be defined as a long-lasting phenomenon. Attest attested at least from the 10th century and certainly from the time of the journey of Beniamino da Tudela, who mentions the Tuscan city among his stops, the community was numerically quite small throughout the Middle Ages, but relevant from an economic point of view, and was made up mostly of those Jews who defined themselves conventionally as Italians. The nomination of Pisa by Florence during the 15th and 16th centuries was expressed by a strong connection between the two Jewish groups of the two cities, and the Pisan bank was fully inserted in the system of the condotte, created and managed from Florence. Although the presence of some Iberian Jews in the city is attested throughout the 15th century, it was from the middle of the 16th century that the Florentine domination welcomed a massive uh, number of new Christians, Cristianos Nuevos, or Cristianos Novos, from Portugal, as well as Spanish Jews and Levantines, attracted by the invitation addressed to them by Cosimo I. Thanks to the privilege, issued by the Grand Duke of Tuscany in the years 1591-93, within the 17th and 18th centuries, the Sephardi group, now preeminent not only from a numerical point of view, but also and above all from an economic one, managed to completely supplant the Italian group at the head of the settlement, as evidenced by the fact that in the middle of the 18th century from this demographic group and from it exclusively, came the Massari, that is the leaders, the Parnassim of the Jewish community. The traditions, the lifestyles, the cultus, and the language of good part of the official documentation and verbal communication of the Sephardi prevailed over the Italian ones. It is sufficient to underline that in Pisa there was only one synagogue, um, unlike centers like Florence or Venice, as well as the large number of documentary sources produced by the community are in Spanish or Portuguese. The documents still preserved both in the community archives and in the state archive of Pisa provide us as evidence we, of a coexistence between Sephardi and Italians made up of encounters, clashes, contamination, acceptance, and rejection, uh, all of which clearly contradicts the idea that the existence of your community implies a strong common purpose of its members and once again dispels the myth of a Jewish solidarity to court. From the second half of the 16th century, and even more clearly in the 17th century, the transition from a Jewish, from a Jewish group to a Jewish community took place as a politically and structurally well-defined and demarcated reality 
even if the narrow spatial boundaries of the ghetto did not ex exist to identify it. The new organization of the communities brought with it an equally new need for the compilation and preservation of documents, uh, which led to the creation of constitutions, ordinances, registers, and establishment of councillors and archives. Whereas in early centuries, documents that were not of uh, literary or religious nature were mostly produced and kept by notaries and trusted with the control of the Jews, now we see a community internal production that correspond not only to the precise specifications of public authority, but ultimately also to the change of social order. This is the reason why it is extremely important to study and preserve historical archives on national territory as a source of primary and inimitable significance for the reconstruction of the events of modern and early contemporary Jewry. Let's take a brief look to the historical archive of the Jewish community. I don't know why it doesn't work. Okay, th thank you, Vlad. Uh, the extremely rich archive of the Jewish community of Pisa contains documentary material from the beginning of the 17th century uh, to the mid of the 60s. It's still waiting to be uh, studied in depth by the scientific community. As already mentioned, the extensive and varied documentary complex provides concrete evidence of the long and uninterrupted Jewish presence in the territory of Pisa. The Jewish historical archive today consists of 1,423 units, including registers, files, and folders, and 4,463 subunits with uh, smaller files and papers that, after the last reorganization, have been divided to 47 series. Um, in the years between 2004-2010, the archivist Dr. Giannotti drew up a brief concise inventory, now uploaded on the new web portal, uh, to facilitate the identification of these documents. Today, the historical archive of the Jewish community of Pisa... Vlad, please. <laughs> it doesn't work. work. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad. Okay. Um, okay, um, today the historical archive of the Jewish community of Pisa contains vital records, that is, registers of births, marriages, divorces, immigrations and deaths, account book of congregations of brotherhood, synagogue records and burial records, all these kind of documents contain important information about the Jewish identities and represent a rich source of data for studying Jewish, Jewish history and, at the same time, individual stories. What is the Ashepi project? Okay, go on. Okay, thank you. Ashepi project combines the best of humanistic research and digital methods to exploit textual analysis technologies in order to extract information from archival documents. The research of the University of Pisa use language skills and manuscript training to decipher critical and written inscription of old archival uh, records. For the pilot project, we choose to work on the Registro Nati Morti e Ballottati, um, which is composed by 94 folios and contains records from here 1749 to the 18th. Uh, 54. This is the Registro Nati Morti and Ballottati, that is the Register of Births, Deaths and Immigrants. And here's a document in which the counselor of the Jewish nation recorded the births and deaths of the, of the Jewish residents. And from folio 65 start the records of the, the Ballottati, the, that is those who obtained Tuscan citizenship through the institution of Ballottazione. We choose this register for the pilot project because it is concise, well-preserved, and contains a lot of social, demographic, and genealogical information about the Jewish nation of Pisa. The document was entirely uh, digitized and uh, with high-resolution instruments, then Mafada Toniazzi and I transcribed, transliterated, and translated from Italian and Hebrew the entire text to converting it into a simple text document on which the researcher of the Institute of the Informatics and Telematics, and in particular the team of the Human-Centered Technology Unit, 
applied an algorithm able to identify keywords within the document itself, facilitating the tedious task of uh, reading the entire document to retrieve a specific information. And this is the work we have done on the registro in question. Uh, now, uh, on the web portal, go on. Okay, no, no, okay. Now, on the web portal, we uploaded also the digitization of other kind of documents, such as criminal acts, a corpus of 22 letters in Hebrew containing correspondence between the Masari of Peace and the Shalichim of Shadarim from Eretz Israel, and uh, also um, a register belonging to the Privilegi Benigne Rescriptive Fund containing a list of the Masari or Parnassim ordinances from the 1567 to the 1788 with a copy of the Grand Duca letter of 1593 and the motto proprio of the 17th. Uh, we have digitized also, also five ketubot, and we see here one ketubah, and, and an interesting Shaddai amulet here. It's a very interesting Shaddai amulet, written a calligraphic Sephardi square script, and dated between the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th century, and finally, Simon Dory registers so carte totale che tu bot, and we see here the che tu bot also, and this half we have the uh, letter from the Shelechim, okay, with, with its, the signature, okay. Go on with this slide. Okay, thank you. And today, Dr. Andre Marchetti and Angelica Loduca will present with, within their lecture the text and data analysis technologies used to extract all the knowledge information from manuscript and documents. Then, Professor Fabrizio Franceschini will illustrate a case study from a linguistic point of view using the same documents already, already uploaded within the SHP project. Uh, so to summarize, the result obtained with the Ashepi project is a very rich container of data and information can, that can connect to each other in order to build up a composite view of the Jewish community of Pisa over time. Ashepi project provides a search tool for researchers, teachers, students, and descendants alike. The platform developed could serve as the basis for numerous studies such as life expectancy, genealogical research, and the reconstruction of the social and economic life of the Jewish community. The synergy of the <coughs> thank you. Okay. The synergy of the three partner institutions, that is the CISE, the IIT, and the Jewish community, has contributed and will contribute to explore and valorize small cultural sites like that of the historical archive of Pisa by favoring the access to historical contents to anyone, everywhere, and in any time. The same technology would easily uh, be exploited in other sites, using the developed components in other cultural contexts. So, at the end of these three lectures, I will briefly show you, with, uh, by means of a recorded video, the potential of this research tool by simulating with you a possible study case or research path. So, thank you very much, and the stage is for Andrea Marchetti. on the members of the Kal Kadosh Pisa. It is possible to compare in birth dates, making an estimate of the most frequent names, tracing family relationship. All this was previously possible by going exclusively to the community archive and scrolling through all the records. Today, with a simple click, one can do a fun research on the community archive site in a few minutes. It is indeed interesting to be able to enter the register, choose the name of the person who inspires us most curiosity, and be able to delve into the events of his life. Today, I want to show you how a simple marriage contract, a ketubah in Hebrew, can be used to draw up a family tree in a few minutes. Let us start with the archive's inventory. Here, by typing the word ketubot, we have 38 results. 
This means that within the archive we can find 38 documents related to funds and series which contains marriage contracts. Among the Ketibot, one of them, not the most beautiful to be honest, accounts an interesting story. Clicking on Ketuba, Kava and Arieti, we can open the image of the marriage contract. Clicking on the first button opens all digitized Ketubot that can be viewed using the arrows, keys or scrolling down here. The, the image can also be enlarged, reduced, or set to full screen. In this ketubah, we read that on the Friday, the 13th of the month of Tishri, in the year 5612, according to the Gregorian calendar, on 10 October 1851, Rosa Cava and Elia Rieti got married. On the recto of the folio, we can read their full names. We can enlarge the image and read Elia Ben Joseph Arieti and Rosa Bat Joseph Cava. The witnesses were Davide Cassuto and Matteo De Castro. What can we say about this couple? Let's do a brief search in the register of Nati Morti and Ballottati. Typing the surname Cava in the search bar of the register will display 35 records or results in which the surname Cava appears. We know that the father's name was Joseph and that Rosa married in 1851. Scrolling through the data, we encounter the record relating to Rosa's birth. Click on and we have here the transcription of her birth and we read that on Saturday, 2 October 1830, at 6 o'clock in the morning, a daughter was born to Joseph Kava, named Rosa Bemazato. We can enlarge also the image of the folio to check the unwritten record. And here we have the record about Rosa's birth. Now we know that Rosa Cava was born in 1830 and married Arieti at the age of 21. However, we want to further refine our research. When was her father born? Who is Rosa's mother? Did Rosa have any brothers? And did she have any children? When did they die? Scrolling down the register, we encounter another record concerning the birth of the older brother of Rosa Cava. We read here, in fact, that in the morning of Sunday in Elul, that is the 9th of September 1827, at 6 o'clock, a son was born to the married couple Joseph di Rafael Cava di Livorno and Anna, daughter of Iacutiel Valencino, named Rafael. This record gives us a lot of information about Cava family. We learn that Rosa's father was born in Livorno, which is why he is not found among the births in our register. Her mother was Anna Valencino, daughter of Iacutiel Valencino. And finally, her eldest brother is named Rafael in honor of his grandfather. Rosa was born three years later. Not only that, on Friday night, if we scroll down immediately afterwards, we find another record. That is here, 
and Friday night, 21 Tibet, that is the 11th January 1833, at about 8 o'clock in the evening, a son was born to Joseph Cava, named Pincas Binyamin, that is Felice Guglielmo, the Siman Tokyo. So, Joseph Cava had a third son with his wife, Anna Valenzino. We still find a Giuseppe Cava, who is our Joseph Cava, the following years, who had two more children, Gentile and David. His wife, however, is Camilla, called Milla of Yafet, from Livorno. Here we have Gentile and David. Click on this uh, record and we can read the transcription and the digitalization. Here we have the record that read on Friday, coming on Saturday, 28 Tammuz, that is 20 July 1838, at 11 o'clock in the afternoon, a child was born to Joseph Kava and Camilla Yafet and was given the name David Besimantov. And we can enlarge, obviously, the image to search the record. And this is the record related to the birth of David here. this. So at this point we know that between the 1833 and the 1835 Joseph Kava got married a second time. There could be two reasons, a divorce or the death of his wife. Scrolling through the records we learn that Anna Valenzino lost her life on the day she gave birth to her third son two hours after the birth of Pinkas Benjamin. In fact, we can read here the record on Friday night, 21 Tibet, that is 11th January 1833, at 11 o'clock in the night, Anna Valencino, wife of Joseph Cava, died, and on the following Sunday at daybreak, she was carried off to be buried in the usual field, Tinseva. Not only that, we learn a little further on that Felicia Guglielmo, the is Pinkas Binyamin, also lived a short life. We find him, in fact, in the record dated Friday 7 August, here, 1835. At about 10 o'clock in the morning, the boy Pinkas Binyamin, that is Felicia Guglielmo, son of Josef Cava, uh, died, and at about 11 p.m., he was buried in the usual field, Tim Seba. And clicking on this record, we can search for the original handwritten script. Here, the record is this, in the top of the folio, so we can enlarge folio 56, Recto, and this is the record about Pinkas Benjamin. And what do you know about Rosa and Elia, the couple of the Kituba? We see in the register that they had a son. In fact, here we read that on Sunday, 27 Tibet, that is. 18 January 1852, at 5 p.m., a son was born to Elia Rieti and Rosa Cava and given the name Joseph Besimanto. And clicking on this record, we can enlarge the image of the register and also the, um, here we have the records and we can enlarge the image of the folio and here there is the related records, original records. Unfortunately, we cannot know the date of Rosa's death nor death of her relatives since the register ends in the year 1854. 
has demonstrated in a few minutes, we reconstructed the parental relationships of a young woman using two different types of documents uploaded on the Chevy portal. Without the transcription and extraction of all the data preserved in the register in question, it would have been more complicated to reconstruct the Cabot family tree.